And I want to share a message with you this morning that I've entitled, God Bless America. In fact, say that with me. Say, God Bless America. Say it one more time. God Bless America. Reading from 2 Chronicles 7, beginning at verse 1. Now when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices and the glory of the Lord filled the house. And the priest could not enter into the house of the Lord because of the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. And when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord uh, upon the house, they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and worshiped and praised the Lord saying, for he is good for his mercy endures forever. Then the king and all the people offered sacrifices before the Lord. Let's pray once again. Heavenly Father, we pray for our country Lord, the United States was built on godly principles. It's one nation under God. On our currency, it says that in God we trust. And Lord, we ask that you'll keep your hand upon this nation. And Lord, continue to bless America. And let us be a reflection of your love and your light to our world. In Jesus' holy name we pray. And everyone said, amen, amen. You can be seated. God bless America. We're living in a pivotal time in our nation's history and actually in the history of mankind. And we're blessed in this nation to be able to have a voice and a vote, amen? We really are. Some places you you don't have that choice, but we have that here. And I wanna encourage you, if you haven't already done so, make sure you go out and vote. And when you vote, vote as as if a little child's life depended on it, amen? Because they they may. Amen. Vote as if your nation's safety depended on it. Because it does. Amen. Your voice and your vote are so important. And and I want to encourage you, don't waste that. Amen. Vote as if your life depends on it. Because it might very well. Amen. I want to talk to you today about blessings and curses that can come upon a nation. You see, God has blessed America just like he blessed Israel. But just like God can bless a nation, God can also remove his hand of protection off of a nation if that nation decides to turn away from God. Here in our opening text, we see King Solomon, who was the political leader of Israel, dedicating the temple to the Lord. And he's not simply dedicating the temple, but he's vowing Uh, A vow as a nation to serve God. That's the same thing that George Washington did when America became a nation. And they brought offerings to God and they asked God for his blessing upon their nation. That was Israel. And God shows up. Amen. And God blesses Solomon and he blesses the nation of Israel and he gives King Solomon some advice. He says, Solomon, you know, you've asked me to bless this nation and I'm going to bless it. But he says, if you ever feel like I've taken my hand of blessing away, if you feel like things are getting bad, if the heaven seems like iron, in other words, no rain's coming, if the ground seems like brass, in other words, no, nothing's growing, if it, if it doesn't feel like a blessing, if, if it feels like a curse, he says, I'm going to give you some advice. And he tells him what to do in Second Chronicles 7, verse 12. And the Lord appeared unto Solomon by night and said to him, I have heard thy prayer, and I have chosen this place. Somebody say, this place. He said, I've chosen this place to to myself for a house of sacrifice. But if I shut up the heaven, that there be no rain. Or if I command the locusts to devour the land. Or if I send pestilence among my people. He says, this is what you need to do if things look bad. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. Somebody say, humble Man, we live in humble Texas. They're real close, amen. God says, if my people will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sins and I'll heal their land. God says, I'm gonna bless you and you're gonna be blessed. But if for some reason things look bad, if it looks like I'm no longer blessing you, there's a reason for it. Somebody went the wrong way. Somebody's doing the wrong thing. And he says, if my people who are called by mine, they they call themselves Christians. They call themselves a nation under God. He said, if my people who are called by my name, if they'll humble themselves, 
He didn't say if they'll get their guns and swords and go fight. He didn't say if they retaliate. No, he didn't say that. He said if they humble themselves and they pray and they repent. In other words, they turn from their wicked ways. He said, I'll hear from heaven and I'll forgive you and I'll heal your land. Amen. God gives Solomon some valuable advice. If things get bad, humble yourselves and pray and seek my face. Don't rise up in pride and say we're going to get tough. Remember who it is that made you a great nation. But Israel forgot those words that God gave him. And when Israel was attacked, instead of humbling themselves before God and praying, they got defiant against God. When they should have been calling upon God. Look what Israel says in, in uh, Isaiah 9, beginning at verse 10. They said, the bricks are fallen down, but we will build with hewn stones. The sycamores are cut down, but we will change them into cedars. Therefore, that's why the Lord will set up the adversaries of resin against him and join his enemies together, the Syrians before, the Palestinians or the Philistines behind. And they shall devour Israel with open mouth. For all this, his anger is not turned away. It says God still wants to bless Israel. His anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. For the people turneth not unto him that smiteth them. Neither do they seek the Lord of hosts. They should have humbled themselves and sought the Lord, but they didn't. Therefore, the Lord will cut off from Israel head and tail, branch and rush in one day. God can change circumstances in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Israel had been defeated and Israel didn't feel blessed. And God said, if this happens, humble yourselves. But instead they said, the bricks are falling down, but we'll build with hewn stones. What does that mean? In other words, man-made bricks. They said, they've knocked down our buildings. They've knocked down our walls. But hey, we'll, we'll build with better stones. Carve stones out of the mountains, you know, granite and, or marble and, instead of man-made bricks. The sycamores are cut down. We'll put a stronger tree. We'll put a pine tree. A conifer tree is what it's talking about. Something that has a cone on it. Stronger root system. We'll, we'll, build, we'll build stronger. We'll put bigger trees. We'll put better stones. So Israel, instead of humbling themselves, was defiant. They didn't repent. Instead, they said, we're going to get defiant. We're going to get stronger. And you might say, well, pastor, what does this have to do with God blessing America? Well, see, America was built on the word of God also, just like Israel was. And our first president dedicated our country to God just like King Solomon did. He dedicated it in New York. President George Washington, after he made his oath of office in Federal Hall in New York City, he led a delegation of leaders to a small church in New York called St. Paul's Chapel. And he prayed this prayer. Listen to this prayer written by George Washington. Almighty God, we make our earnest prayer that thou wilt keep the United States in thy holy protection, that thou wilt incline the ears of the citizens to cultivate a spirit of subordination and obedience to government, to entertain a brotherly affection and love for one another and for their fellow citizens of the United States at large. And finally, that thou wilt most graciously be pleased to dispose us all to justice to love, mercy, and to demean ourselves with that charity, humility, and pacific temper of mind, which were the characteristics of the divine author of our blessed religion, talking about Jesus. He was saying, make us be more like Christ. Let us be humble. Let us be uh, giving, charitable. And without a humble imitation of whose example in these things can never hope to be a happy nation, Grant our supplication, we beseech thee, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This is a prayer that George Washington made at St. Paul's Chapel in New York City. He said, let us show love and mercy and humility. Because if we don't, we can't expect the protection or the blessing of God. We'll not be a happy nation if we don't serve God. This is very similar to what King Solomon prayed. And when Israel turned away from God, judgment came upon Israel at the place where they made this vow to God. The temple was destroyed, and that's where the vow was made. When George Washington made this vow, he made it at St. Paul's Chapel in New York City. 
And I want to show a photo of that if we have it. Uh, that's St. Paul's Chapel there at the bottom left. And if you notice behind it, you see the new World Trade Center towers because, see, St. Paul's Chapel owned the land where the World Trade Center towers used to be. In other words, when George Washington made that prayer and made that vow over this nation, he did it on that property. And on that property is where the bricks had fallen. It's where our nation was judged. See, almost every building around the World Trade Centers was damaged or destroyed except for St. Paul's Chapel. Some of the steel from the towers, when the towers fell, actually fell towards the, the, the church but the church was spared because they hit a sycamore tree that was beside the church. Show that photo if you would. Uh, and there's a tree that was hit by the debris fallen from the World Trade Center towers. That tree was cut down and it spared the, the, the chapel. And it sounds like the judgment that came on Israel. Let's read it again and apply it to the United States. It says in Isaiah 9 verse 10, the bricks are fallen down but we'll build with hewn stones. The sycamores are cut down, but we'll change them into cedars. Therefore, that's why the Lord shall set up the adversaries of resin against him and join his enemies together. God said you should have repented. You should have humbled yourself and prayed, but instead you got defiant. When the enemies came against Israel, God told them what to do. He said, if you'll humble yourselves and pray and, and turn from your wickedness, I'll hear from heaven. And I'll heal your land. But instead Israel was defiant and they didn't repent. They said, we'll put up quarry stones, bigger stones, better than brick. We'll put up pine trees, stronger trees than the sycamore trees. And you know, that's exactly what uh, America did as well. When the bricks fell, what we did is we, we went and cut out a big quarry stone and made a declaration. In fact, show that next photo. There's the stone. And they pronounced a vow at this place where they placed the stone. And this is what it said. It says, today we the heirs of that revolutionary spirit of defiance. Wow, that's exactly what God said not to do. That revolutionary spirit of defiance lay this cornerstone and unmistakably signal to the world the unwavering strength of this nation, our resolve to fight for freedom. Governor George Pataki, July 4th, 2005. And, and there's nothing wrong with defending our nation. There's nothing wrong with saying, you know, we're, we're going to fight our enemies. We're going to protect our country. But when you're a country blessed by God, when you're a nation under God, and God says, if things look bad, humble yourselves and pray and seek my face. And they don't even mention God. Hello. That's not what God wanted. The problem comes when we think we got all this by ourselves instead of repenting before God. We don't need to be defiant. What we need is for God to bless America again. Amen? These leaders declared we are the heirs of that revolutionary spirit of defiance. That's exactly what God told them not to do. But there's more. That wasn't the only sign. Israel said in, in Isaiah 9 verse 10, the bricks are fallen down, but we'll build with hewn stones. The sycamores are cut down, but we'll change them into cedars. They said they were going to change the sycamore tree into a conifer tree or a tree that has a cone like a pine tree. And that's exactly what they did when that tree got damaged. Show the next photo if you will. They put this pine tree in its place, the tree of hope they called it. A stronger tree that has a better root system. They said we're going to put something better in its place. It's another prophetic sign of a nation being defiant against God. It's okay to be defiant against our enemies, but not against God. Remember, God said, if you'll humble yourselves and pray and turn from your wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven. And I'll heal your land. You might think, well, is our nation really being defiant? Like Israel, mentioned in Isaiah 9 verse 10. Consider the following. On the day after the 9-11 attack, the Senate Majority Leader, Tom Daschle, made a speech to inspire the nation. And at the end of his speech, this is what he said. I know that there is only the smallest measure of inspiration that can be taken from this devastation. But there is a passage in the Bible from Isaiah that I think speaks to all of us 
at times like this. The bricks have fallen down, but we will rebuild with dressed stone. The fig trees have been felled, but we will replace them with cedars. It's an interesting thing. This guy, this leader, Senate Majority Leader, read these verses not even realizing that what he was doing was proclaiming a curse on the nation. Those verses were, were saying, don't be defiant. Humble yourselves before God because if you're defiant, I'm going to let the enemies have their way. And that's the verse he chose. Some, I don't know if somebody gave it to him and said, hey, read this. It looks like it you know, go, goes well with it. But he didn't do his homework. And judgment not only came upon the nation, but came upon him as a leader. There was another vice presidential candidate, John Edwards, who quoted that same verse. This is what he said. Today, on this day of remembrance and mourning, we have the Lord's word to get us through. The bricks have fallen, but we will rebuild with dress stones. The sycamores have been cut down, but we will put cedars in their place. Wow. He was giving a vow of judgment on our nation without realizing it. Shortly thereafter, he fell into disgrace and judgment. And it's interesting because neither of these men realized what they were saying. They pronounced judgment on themselves and upon the nation. And I don't think it was intentional. But what we need is for God to bless America. Amen. We can't think, you know, here we're the youngest nation on the planet. We're, we're so young. I don't know if you've ever traveled any part of the world, but, you, you know, go to Italy and go, go to China. You, you'll, you'll find churches there that are thousands of years old. Thousands. You know, uh, palaces and things that are older than our country. Our country is just a little over 200 years old. And such a young country to be considered the most powerful on earth, it wasn't because we were so smart. It was because of whose we are, not who we are. Amen? It's because God is our Savior. Go ahead and give the Lord praise. Amen. Amen. You know, another sign that, that God is judging a nation is that he will uproot it and expose its corruption. It says in 2 Chronicles seven nineteen, but if you turn away and forsake my statutes and my commandments, which I have set before you, and shall go and serve other gods and worship them, then will I pluck them up by the roots out of my land, which I have given them, and this house, house which I have sacrificed for my name, will I cast out of my sight and will make it to be a proverb and a byword among all the nations. God says, after all these things happen, if you still refuse to serve me, if you still refuse to humble yourselves and pray, then I will uproot you. Go ahead and show that next slide, if you would, William. Yeah, th that's the root system of that tree that, that fell. And there's two root systems I'm, I'm going to show you, but that's one of them. It's on display and it's amazing how God tells us in his word what he's going to do. And then we see it at the place where the vow was made. That's where George Washington was when he made the vow. The same vow that King Solomon made and God told Solomon, listen, if things don't look good, if things start getting bad, something's wrong. It happened with Joshua. Joshua. God told Joshua, every place that you set your foot, I'm going to give it to you. Josh fought against Ai and lost the battle and fell on his face and said, God, what's, what's wrong? And God, in essence, I'm going to paraphrase here a little bit, but God, in essence, said, Joshua, I gave you my word. And if things aren't going right, either I'm wrong or you're wrong. Guess who's wrong? Hello. He said, you need to go examine your people. You better go examine your camp. Because if you did what I told you to do, you'd have what I said you'd have. And so Joshua went and examined the camp and found out that Achan had stolen from God. And when they got rid of the sin, God had let them win the battle. They defeated Ai, ultimately. They just lost a battle. They didn't lose the war. I tell people sometimes Joshua never lost a war. And, and some people say, ah, oh, Ai, Ai. I said, he won the war against Ai. He lost the battle. 
because he was getting sent out of the camp. See, that was a picture of what Yeshua did, Jesus. It may have looked like he lost at the cross, but he didn't. He was just getting sent out of the camp when he died at Calvary. But on the third day, he rose again. Amen. Jesus is undefeated. Amen. And he will always be undefeated. Go ahead and give him praise. Amen. There's another tree that I want to talk to you about. It's called a buttonwood tree. There's a historical document that was signed in New York under the buttonwood tree. It's called the Buttonwood Agreement. It was signed on May the 17th, 1792. 24 stockholders signed the agreement. At the, the address was 68 Wall Street. And today, it's not called the Buttonwood Agreement anymore. It's called the New York Stock Exchange. We know it as Wall Street. It represents the economy of the United States. And displayed on Wall Street are the roots of a tree that was cut down. They're displayed in bronze as though God uprooted the fine. Show that next uh, photo. As if God uprooted our finances and exposed them to the world. It's just a picture of judgment. That's at Wall Street. And that's close to the chapel there. Man. When a nation says we're going to be strong like the cedar but doesn't acknowledge God. When a nation says we're going to replace the man-made bricks with hewn stones. We're going to do this ourselves without God. Then a nation's going to fall. Isaiah 27 verse 11 says this. When the boughs therefore are withered, they shall be broken off. The women come and set them on fire for it is a people of no understanding. Therefore, he that made them will not have mercy on them. And he that formed them will show them no favor. God says, I won't bless you if you don't do what I tell you to do. The pine tree that was planted at St. Paul's Chapel in New York withered and died. It never survived. Wow. Look at our opening text again and, and, and see if it applies to America. The bricks are fallen down, but we will build with hewn stones. The sycamores are cut down, but we will change them into cedars. Therefore, the Lord shall set up the adversaries of resin against him and join his enemies together, the Syrians before, the Philistines or the Palestinians behind, and they shall devour Israel with open mouth. For all his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. In other words, his hand is still there. God's ready to, to bless America. For the people turneth not unto him that smiteth them, neither do they seek the Lord of hosts. Therefore, the Lord will cut off from Israel head and tail, branch and rush in one day. It says Israel would be attacked. The Palestinians, the Syrians, the Iranians, all that's happening today. America has drifted so far from God. When I, when I hear one of the candidates say, how dare they say Merry Christmas? Ooh, man, are you kidding? And then later, of course, same candidate said Merry Christmas. You know, it's, it's strange, but how dare we not say Christmas? How dare we not acknowledge Christ when God has blessed this nation? Amen. How dare you want to take God out of the Pledge of Allegiance? Now think about that. If you just took the word God out of the Pledge of Allegiance, instead of one nation under God, it would just be one nation under, and that's the truth. It would be one nation under, and that's, that's the truth. Boy, do we need God. God has blessed our nation. What does it all mean? Is this a message of doom and gloom? No, God loves Israel, and God loves America. And the scriptures declare that that those that love the Lord and, and, and those that the Lord loves, he chastens or disciplines. God loves America, just like God loves Israel. And he told Israel, and he tells us how to turn things around. I want you to understand something. God loves you individually. God knows you, and he loves you. And maybe, maybe there's been times where you feel like, man, things aren't going good in your life. I don't know if you've ever been there. I have. And, and when that happens, I, I often just begin to examine my life. Are you doing what you're supposed to do? You know, because God said. And if somebody didn't keep their word, hello, Joshua, if there's something wrong, either I'm not keeping my word or you're not keeping your word, guess who it is? Hello. I'm going to tell you something. It's not God. That's not the problem. So examine your heart. Humble yourselves and pray and repent. Turn from your wicked ways. God is like a loving father. He loves you. And he's waiting for his child to repent and say, I'm sorry. 
You ever do that? You ever punish your child? And, and, and uh, you wait for them to come back and say, I'm sorry, Dad. I'm sorry, Mom. And then what do you say? Okay, now you can go ahead and you know, play your video game. Or now you can go ahead and watch TV. Or now you can go ahead and have that candy bar. Or whatever it was that they wanted. You don't hate them. You don't quit loving them. You don't quit protecting them. You just want them to learn, right? And so you punish them. And, and it's not a forever punishment. You just want them to turn around and say, I understand what I did wrong. If my people would, would humble themselves and pray and turn from the, repent, turn from their wicked ways. He said, I'll, I'll heal your, your land, amen? I'll bless you. I'll protect you like a loving father. Second Chronicles 7, 13. If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people, if you're his people, say amen. He says, if my people, which are called by my name, if you're a Christian, say amen. He said, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, God says, I'm going to hear. And I'm going to forgive. And I'm going to heal. Amen. God says, I'm going to hear. And I'm going to forgive. And I'm going to heal. Amen. Let's stand together. Well, thanks for watching the program. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, we'd love to invite you to come out and join us for service here at Christian Life Center. We're located right here in Kingwood, Texas, behind the Fine Arts Community Center called the Nathaniel Center. Uh, our building is right behind it. We're in Building D. Our address is 806 Russell Palmer Road, Kingwood, Texas, and the zip is 77339. Listen, Christian Life Center is a church designed to meet the needs of the entire family. We have programs for single and married adults and kiddos of all ages. <laughs> Vacation Bible School is coming up soon uh, in July, and your kids will love it. This year's theme is called Joy Story, and we're going to have some of the uh, vehicles from the movie Cars out here and some characters in costume. The kids are going to love it. We have a great uh, daycare and Christian school that your children can be a part of. And uh, come out and join us. If you need more information, give us a call. Our phone number is 713-398-9282. And would you consider uh, sowing a seed into the ministry? You know, you can text an offering uh, by simply calling the number on your screen, 844-297-9517. Uh, 844-297-9517. 9517. You can text an offering of any amount to that number and we'll receive it and you'll have a record of your giving. Once again, thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed the service and we're looking forward to seeing you here at Christian Life Center in the near future. God bless you.